Understanding your values and priorities is key to navigating life effortlessly. When you're clear on what matters to you and where you're headed, it becomes simple to filter out distractions and concentrate on what truly counts. Often it's not just the answers but the questions themselves that hold the most valuable lessons. Today I want to share 25 questions, inspired by the wisdom of the Stoics and other historical figures, that have the potential to reshape your perspective and guide you regardless of who you are or what you're pursuing in life. Before we begin, I'd like to ask you to make sure you watch this video until the end, because every question asked is important. With that said, let's begin. 1. Who are you spending time with? In life, our companions shape the trajectory of our journey. Choose those who align with your values and aspirations. A key lesson here is to be mindful of the company you keep. For instance, if your circle encourages personal growth, you're more likely to thrive. Conversely, if you find yourself surrounded by negativity or individuals who hinder your progress, it might be time to reconsider. Consider the example of a person striving for a healthier lifestyle. If they spend time with friends who prioritize fitness and well-being, the positive influence can be profound. On the other hand, constant exposure to those who undermine healthy choices may impede progress. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. It underscores the powerful impact our social circle can have on our character and achievements. So, choose wisely, for the company you keep plays a pivotal role in shaping who you become. Two, is this in my control? Life often throws situations our way, and it's essential to discern what we can influence and what lies beyond our grasp. This question encapsulates the core Stoic principle of focusing on the controllable. Consider a scenario where external circumstances, like the weather, disrupt your plans. Instead of dwelling on the uncontrollable rain, direct your attention to what you can control, perhaps your attitude or finding an alternative activity. This mindset shift is crucial for maintaining composure and making constructive decisions. In a broader sense, separating the controllable from the uncontrollable applies to various aspects of life. Your reactions, choices and efforts fall within your control, while external events and others' actions often do not. By mastering this distinction, you navigate challenges with resilience and cultivate a sense of agency over your own destiny. As Epictetus wisely stated, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Embracing this philosophy empowers us to focus our energy where it truly matters, on the aspects of life we can shape and influence. 3. What does your ideal day look like? Picture your ideal day as the blueprint for a well-lived life. It's not about wishful thinking, but a deliberate act of designing a life aligned with your values and aspirations. This question prompts us to consider the elements that compose our perfect day and, by extension, our overall existence. Let's consider an example. Suppose your ideal day involves waking up early, engaging in meaningful work, spending quality time with loved ones, and enjoying moments of solitude. This isn't merely a daydream, it's a vision that can guide your daily choices. Strive to integrate these elements into your routine, making intentional decisions that bring you closer to the life you envision. By understanding what constitutes your ideal day, you gain clarity on your priorities and values. It's about carving out time for activities that truly matter to you. Whether it's pursuing a passion, connecting with loved ones, or embracing moments of quiet reflection, your ideal day serves as a compass for navigating life's choices. As Annie Dillard aptly puts it, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. So craft your days with purpose and you'll find yourself building a life that resonates with your deepest desires and aspirations. 4. To be or to do. In the pursuit of a meaningful life, there's a crucial fork in the road, the choice between to be and to do. This question challenges us to reflect on our motivations. Are we driven by the desire to appear important, seeking external validation and recognition, 
or are we committed to accomplishing things that genuinely matter? Consider the distinction. The person who strives to be often seeks status, accolades, and visibility. On the other hand, the one focused on doing channels energy into making a tangible impact, irrespective of external validation. It's the age-old difference between seeking credit and quietly getting things done. Think about someone who takes on a leadership role, not for the title, but to make a genuine contribution. Their focus is on the impact of their actions, rather than the recognition that comes with the position. This dichotomy is about choosing substance over appearances, about emphasizing accomplishments over the allure of importance. As the saying goes, it's amazing how much you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. This encapsulates the essence of to-do. It's a reminder that true fulfillment comes not from the external trappings of importance, but from the meaningful deeds we undertake. So, ponder your motivations and let your actions speak louder than the desire for recognition. 5. How are you measuring your life? In the grand scheme of life, it's essential to scrutinize the metrics we use to measure our worth. Are we fixated on personal accomplishments, a checklist of accolades, or are we attuned to the broader impact we have on the world? This isn't just a philosophical inquiry, it's a pragmatic assessment of the legacy we're building. Consider the person solely driven by personal achievements, a pursuit of titles, possessions, and individual triumphs. It's a valid pursuit, but if it doesn't extend beyond the self, it may lack the enduring significance that comes from making a positive impact on the lives of others. Now think about the individual who measures their life by impact. Their focus extends beyond personal gains. It's about how their actions ripple through the lives of those around them. It's the difference between collecting accolades for personal glory and using one's skills and resources to contribute to the well-being of others. Imagine a successful entrepreneur who not only amasses wealth for personal comfort, but channels resources into initiatives that uplift communities. This person isn't just accumulating accomplishments, they're measuring their life by the positive changes they bring to the world. As we navigate our journey, it's crucial to strike a balance. Personal accomplishments can be fulfilling, but their true significance emerges when they contribute to the betterment of humanity. So, reflect on the balance in your life. Are you pursuing a checklist of achievements, or are you actively shaping a legacy of impact? The answer might reshape the way you approach your goals and aspirations. 6. Who am I for? In the narrative of our lives, it's paramount to ask, who am I here for? This question delves into the delicate dance between self-interest and the collective good. It urges us to contemplate our role not just as individuals, but as contributors to a greater cause or team effort. Consider the person solely driven by self-interest, navigating life with an exclusive focus on personal gains. While individual success is a valid pursuit, there's a profound richness in also being for something beyond oneself. It's the difference between a solo performance and being part of a symphony, where individual contributions harmonize to create something far more impactful. Imagine a leader in a team, driven not just by personal success, but equally invested in the success and well-being of the entire group. This individual understands that elevating others isn't a detraction from personal goals, but a synergistic approach where collective achievements enhance individual successes. The lesson here is about balancing the pursuit of personal goals with a commitment to a broader purpose. It's about understanding that your individual journey can be enriched when intertwined with the journeys of those around you. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So, ask yourself, in the grand tapestry of life, who am I for? Am I solely for personal triumphs or do I actively contribute to the success and well-being of the collective? Striking this balance can lead to a more fulfilling and impactful journey. 7. What am I missing by choosing to worry or be afraid? This question urges us to evaluate the opportunity cost of investing our emotional energy in negative emotions, highlighting the potential gains forfeited in the process. Consider the individual caught in the web of anxiety, 
Each moment spent worrying is a moment diverted from constructive action or positive engagement. It's akin to paying a toll for a road that leads nowhere. A toll paid not in currency, but in missed opportunities and stunted growth. Imagine facing a challenge at work and letting anxiety take the reins. The mental energy invested in worry could have been channeled into problem-solving or creative thinking. Instead, it becomes a self-imposed barrier, hindering progress and amplifying the weight of the challenge. The lesson here is about recognizing the toll of negative emotions on our capacity to seize opportunities and navigate challenges effectively. It's understanding that worry and fear, while natural emotions, can become counterproductive when they overshadow our ability to respond thoughtfully and proactively. As the ancient Stoic philosophy advises, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. By questioning the opportunity cost of our negative emotions, we open the door to a more intentional and resilient approach to life's challenges. So ask yourself, what am I missing out on by choosing worry or fear? The answer might reveal untapped potential and unexplored opportunities. 8. Are you doing your job? In the midst of life's many distractions, it's important to ask yourself, are you really focusing on your responsibilities or are you getting sidetracked by other people's problems? Consider the individual who, instead of focusing on their assigned tasks, finds themselves immersed in the responsibilities of their colleagues or friends. While collaboration is valuable, losing sight of one's primary responsibilities can lead to a diluted impact and unfulfilled potential. Imagine a team member whose dedication to their job gets clouded by a constant desire to micromanage others or to take on tasks beyond their purview. In doing so, they risk diluting the effectiveness of their own contributions while neglecting the duties they are uniquely positioned to fulfill. The lesson here is about maintaining a clear and disciplined focus on your designated responsibilities. It's acknowledging that while collaboration and support are essential, being overly entangled in the affairs of others can divert energy from your own critical tasks. As the saying goes, do your job and demand your rights. By adhering to your responsibilities, you not only contribute your best, but also create a foundation for personal growth and meaningful impact. So ask yourself, amid the noise of external demands, are you doing your job? The answer may illuminate the path to a more purposeful and impactful journey. 9. What is the most important thing to you? This question explores your fundamental values and priorities. Think of a person who, when asked this question, reflects on their life's tapestry and identifies relationships, integrity, or personal growth as paramount. It's about distilling the noise of daily demands and societal expectations to discern the true north of one's values. Consider the professional who values meaningful work over accolades, or the parent who prioritizes quality time with family over external measures of success. This question is a compass, guiding us to navigate the complexities of life with a steadfast focus on what truly matters. The lesson here is about understanding that clarity on your most important thing illuminates the path forward. It's a strategic alignment of actions with values, a deliberate choice to invest time and energy in pursuits that resonate with your authentic self. As the ancient wisdom goes, know what you value most and let your life reflect it. By identifying your core values and priorities, you cultivate a compass that steers your decisions and actions towards a life that feels genuinely meaningful. So ask yourself, in the grand tapestry of existence, what is the most important thing to you? The answer might become the guiding star for a purposeful and fulfilling journey. 10. Who is this for? In the world of creating and doing, ask yourself, who will benefit from this? This question urges us to consider the audience or the people our efforts are meant for. Consider a creator, whether an artist, writer or entrepreneur, who crafts something meaningful without a clear sense of their audience. The resonance of their work can be compromised when it lacks a connection to the needs, desires or aspirations of those for whom it is intended. Imagine a leader or influencer whose message doesn't resonate with the intended recipients. Without a profound understanding of their audience, their impact may fall short. 
This question prompts us to bridge the gap between intention and reception, ensuring that our actions or creations genuinely serve those they're meant for. The lesson here is about empathy and intentionality. It's about recognizing that our efforts gain depth and significance when they are tailored to meet the needs of those who will engage with or benefit from them. As the saying goes, know your audience. Whether it's a product, a message, or an act of service, understanding the intended recipients enriches the impact of our endeavors. So, ask yourself, who is this for? The answer refines your approach, transforming your creations or actions into meaningful contributions that resonate with the hearts and minds of those you seek to connect with or serve. 11. Does this actually matter? This question encourages us to think about the importance of the things on our minds, helping us distinguish between the trivial and the truly meaningful. Consider the individual entangled in minor frustrations or fleeting annoyances. Asking whether these concerns actually matter invites a perspective shift. It's about acknowledging that not everything that captures our attention is worthy of our emotional investment. Imagine a professional facing a setback or a perceived failure by questioning the matter's true significance, they can redirect their focus to what truly holds weight in their journey, sidestepping the trap of dwelling on transient challenges. The lesson here is about cultivating a discerning mindset. It's acknowledging that our thoughts and emotions are valuable resources, and spending them on issues of little consequence is a disservice to our well-being and progress. By regularly questioning the gravity of our preoccupations, we hone our ability to invest our energy where it truly matters. As Marcus Aurelius wisely noted, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. So ask yourself, does this actually matter? The answer might lead you to a more serene and purposeful state of mind, free from the unnecessary burdens of trivial concerns. 12. Will this be a lifetime or dead time? Consider whether you actively use each moment for growth or wait passively for things to happen. Picture someone facing a period of transition, perhaps a pause between jobs or life chapters. The distinction between lifetime and dead time lies in how they choose to utilize this interval. Will they actively invest in learning, self-discovery and skill development? Or will they let these precious moments slip away in passivity? Imagine the contrast between someone who uses a waiting period to read, learn and cultivate new skills versus another who idly bides time without purposeful engagement. The former turns what could be perceived as dead time into a live time, brimming with opportunities for personal and professional advancement. The lesson here is about the power of intentional living. It's recognizing that every moment presents a choice to actively shape our experiences or passively await external circumstances. By embracing live time, we transform waiting periods, setbacks or transitions into fertile ground for growth. As Seneca aptly puts it, life is long if you know how to use it. So, ask yourself, will this be a live time or dead time? The answer might reveal the key to unlocking continuous growth and improvement in the evolving chapters of your life. 13. What can I learn from this obstacle? This question reframes challenges as opportunities for personal growth and learning, urging us to extract wisdom from adversity. Consider the individual facing a setback or obstacle. Instead of viewing it solely as a roadblock, the question encourages a mindset shift. It's about recognizing that challenges, rather than being mere impediments, are classrooms for acquiring resilience, adaptability, and valuable life lessons. Imagine someone navigating a professional setback, a project that didn't go as planned, or a business endeavor that faced unexpected challenges. The shift in perspective, prompted by the question, allows them to uncover insights, refine strategies, and emerge from the obstacle not just unscathed, but fortified with newfound knowledge. The lesson here is about adopting a resilient and growth-oriented mindset, it's understanding that obstacles aren't mere impediments, but rather stepping stones for personal and professional development. By asking what can be learned from each challenge, we turn adversity into an ally on the path to becoming our best selves. As Epictetus wisely said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. 
So, ask yourself, what can I learn from this obstacle? The answer might unveil a treasure trove of insights and pave the way for continuous personal and professional evolution. 14. Am I practicing gratitude? This question serves as a reminder to acknowledge and appreciate the positive aspects of our lives, even in the midst of difficult times. Consider the person facing adversity who, amidst the storm, takes a moment to reflect on the things they are grateful for, be it the support of loved ones, the lessons learned from challenges, or the resilience that adversity has cultivated. It's an intentional shift from dwelling on hardships to recognizing the silver linings. Imagine someone going through a rough patch in their career. Instead of succumbing to frustration, they pause to express gratitude for the skills they've acquired, the experiences that shaped them, and the opportunity for growth that adversity presents. It's a powerful pivot towards a more positive and resilient mindset. The lesson here is about the transformative power of gratitude. It's understanding that, even in the face of difficulties, there's always something to be thankful for. By actively practicing gratitude, we shift our focus from what's lacking to what's present, fostering a mindset of abundance and resilience. As Melody Beatty wisely said, gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. So, ask yourself, am I practicing gratitude? The answer might unveil a profound source of strength and positivity amid life's inevitable challenges. 15. How can I turn adversity into advantage? This question embraces stoic principles, urging us to apply wisdom and resilience to transform obstacles into opportunities for strength and growth. Consider the individual confronting a setback, setback, or unexpected turn of events. Instead of viewing it solely as a roadblock, this question prompts a stoic mindset shift. It's about channeling the philosophy that adversity is not just a test, but an opportunity to cultivate resilience, fortitude, and a deeper understanding of oneself. Imagine someone who has faced professional setbacks or personal challenges. The application of this question allows them to navigate adversity with a stoic lens, extracting lessons, refining strategies, and emerging not merely unscathed, but fortified with newfound wisdom and strength. The lesson here is about embracing stoic principles to alchemize adversity into advantage. It's recognizing that challenges, rather than being insurmountable obstacles, are platforms for personal evolution. By asking how to turn adversity into advantage, we embody the stoic idea that the obstacle is the way, an integral part of the journey toward becoming our best selves. As Seneca wisely noted, he who fears death will never do anything worth of a man who is alive. So ask yourself, how can I turn adversity into advantage? The answer might unlock the stoic resilience within you, paving the way for transformative growth amid life's inevitable challenges. 16. Am I attached to external outcomes? This question delves into the stoic philosophy, urging us to reflect on whether our happiness is contingent upon external events beyond our control. Consider the individual whose contentment is tied to external validations, success, recognition, or the approval of others. The question prompts them to reassess their source of happiness, recognizing that the fickle nature of external circumstances can be an unreliable foundation. Imagine someone working diligently on a project, fully invested in the outcome. By reflecting on their attachment to external success, they open the door to a stoic perspective, understanding that while effort and intention are within their control, external outcomes are often subject to variables beyond their influence. The lesson here is about cultivating an internal locus of control. It's acknowledging that true contentment stems from within, irrespective of the unpredictable twists and turns of external events. By questioning our attachment to outcomes, we liberate ourselves from the roller coaster of external validations and find stability in the core of our own values and actions. As Epictetus wisely said, we may not be able to control every situation, but we can always control how we choose to perceive it. So ask yourself, am I attached to external outcomes? The answer might lead to a profound shift in perspective, enabling you to find enduring joy in the journey rather than fleeting moments of external success. For 17. Do I embrace change willingly? This question invites us to consider our attitude towards change 
and encourages the practice of acceptance amid the inherent impermanence of life. Imagine the individual who clings tightly to familiarity and resists the inevitability of change. The question encourages a shift in perspective, urging them to view change not as a threat, but as an opportunity for growth, adaptation, and new beginnings. Consider someone facing a career transition or a significant life change. By reflecting on their willingness to embrace change, they can cultivate a mindset that views transitions as chapters in a dynamic journey rather than disruptions to be feared. The lesson here is about aligning with the stoic principle of accepting the nature of change. It's acknowledging that life is in a constant state of flux and our ability to embrace change willingly allows us to navigate uncertainties with grace and resilience. As Heraclitus wisely said, change is the only constant in life. So, ask yourself, do I embrace change willingly? The answer might lead you to a more fluid and adaptable approach to life, where each change becomes an opportunity for personal and spiritual evolution, rather than a source of resistance or discomfort. 18. Am I acting in accordance with nature? This question prompts us to align our actions with the natural order of the world, focusing on what is reasonable and just. Consider the individual whose actions are driven by societal expectations or the pursuit of superficial desires. The question encourages a recalibration, urging them to consider whether their choices align with timeless principles and the inherent order of the universe. Imagine someone facing a moral dilemma at work, torn between expedient but unjust actions and those that align with ethical principles. By reflecting on whether they are acting in accordance with nature, they navigate toward choices that resonate with a deeper sense of integrity and justice. The lesson here is about harmonizing with the stoic concept of living in accordance with nature. It's understanding that, by aligning our actions with universal principles, we not only contribute to the greater good, but also find a profound sense of purpose and fulfillment. As Albert Einstein wisely noted, strive not to be a success, but rather to be of value. So, ask yourself, am I acting in accordance with nature? The answer might guide you toward choices that echo the universal principles of reason, justice, and virtue, fostering a life that transcends the fleeting and aligns with the enduring. 19. What virtues am I cultivating? This introspection calls us to identify and actively nurture virtues such as wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Imagine the individual navigating life without intentional cultivation of virtues, drifting along without a compass for their moral and ethical decisions. The question prompts a deliberate examination, urging them to consider the virtues they wish to embody and the impact on their character. Consider someone faced with a moral dilemma, grappling with the decision to act justly or take an expedient shortcut. By reflecting on the virtues they are cultivating, they find guidance in aligning their choices with the principles of justice and integrity. The lesson here is about the intentional pursuit of virtuous living. It's recognizing that virtues are not innate, but require conscious effort to cultivate. By asking what virtues we are actively nurturing, we embark on a journey of self-improvement and character development. As Aristotle wisely said, excellence is an art won by training and habituation. So ask yourself, what virtues am I cultivating? The answer might lead you to a path of intentional growth, where the virtues you nurture become the guiding stars, illuminating your journey toward a more virtuous and fulfilling life. 20. Do I practice self-discipline? This question delves into our ability to resist immediate gratification for the sake of long-term goals. Consider the individual facing the temptation of shortcuts or indulgence, sacrificing long-term growth for momentary pleasure. The question prompts a deep reflection on the role of self-discipline in shaping the trajectory of one's life. Imagine someone committed to a challenging project or pursuing a demanding goal. By assessing their practice of self-discipline, they can navigate the inevitable allure of immediate rewards, staying focused on the perseverance required for lasting success. The lesson here is about understanding that self-discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. It's about sacrificing short-term comfort for the sake of long-term achievement. By asking ourselves if we practice self-discipline, 
we take a crucial step toward mastering the art of delayed gratification. As Seneca wisely noted, he who is brave is free. So ask yourself, do I practice self-discipline? The answer might unveil the key to unlocking your full potential, allowing you to navigate the challenges of life with steadfast determination and resilience. 21. Am I mindful of the present moment? This question encourages us to practice being fully present and engaged in the current moment, steering away from dwelling on the past or fretting about the future. Consider the individual whose thoughts are often scattered across the timeline of regrets or anxieties. The question prompts a shift in perspective, urging them to recognize the richness of life unfolding in the now and the opportunities it presents. Imagine someone caught in the whirlwind of a hectic day preoccupied with future uncertainties. By reflecting on their mindfulness of the present moment, they can redirect their attention to the tasks at hand, finding joy and fulfillment in the immediate experiences. The lesson here is about the art of being present. It's understanding that the past is a realm of lessons and the future is shaped by the actions taken in the present. By asking ourselves if we are mindful of the present moment, we embrace the fullness of life as it unfolds savoring each moment for what it is. As Thich Nhat Hanh wisely said, life is available only in the present moment. So ask yourself, am I mindful of the present moment? The answer might open the door to a more profound experience of life where the richness of each moment becomes a source of wisdom, gratitude, and joy. 22. How can I contribute to the common good? This question urges us to consider how our actions can positively impact our community and society as a whole. Imagine the individual reflecting on their role in the broader social fabric, recognizing the interconnectedness of their actions with the well-being of others. The question prompts a shift from individual pursuits to a collective perspective, fostering a sense of responsibility for the common good. Consider someone faced with opportunities to make a difference, whether through volunteering, community initiatives, or small acts of kindness. By reflecting on how they can contribute to the common good, they become active participants in creating positive ripples that extend beyond personal boundaries. The lesson here is about transcending individual concerns and recognizing the power each person holds to shape the collective experience. It's about understanding that contributing to the common good is not only a moral imperative, but also a source of fulfillment and purpose. As Mahatma Gandhi wisely noted, you must be the change you want to see in the world. So ask yourself, how can I contribute to the common good? The answer might unveil a path where your actions become a force for positive transformation, leaving an indelible mark on the world around you. 23. Am I seeking validation from others? This question invites us to reflect on whether our sense of self-worth relies too heavily on external validation. Imagine the individual who constantly seeks approval, approval from peers, colleagues, or society, tethering their self-esteem to the ever-changing winds of external opinions. The question urges a re-evaluation, encouraging them to find a more stable foundation for their self-worth. Consider someone navigating a creative endeavor, a project, or personal growth journey by reflecting on whether they are seeking validation from others, they can liberate themselves from the shackles of external opinions finding fulfillment in the authenticity of their endeavors. The lesson here is about understanding the intrinsic value of one's efforts and identity. It's recognizing that seeking validation externally is a fleeting pursuit, whereas cultivating a strong sense of self-worth from within provides a more enduring and resilient foundation. As Oscar Wilde wisely remarked, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. So, ask yourself, Am I seeking validation from others? The answer might lead you to a path of self-discovery and authenticity, where the validation you seek is rooted in your own understanding of your worth and contributions. 24. What can I let go of? This question prompts us to identify and release attachments to material possessions, opinions or situations that do not serve our well-being. Imagine the individual burdened by the weight of unnecessary attachments clinging to possessions, opinions, or relationships that no longer contribute positively to their life. The question encourages a deliberate examination, 
urging them to discern between what adds value and what hinders their growth. Consider someone caught in the trap of materialism, accumulating possessions for the sake of appearances. By reflecting on what they can let go of, they embark on a path of simplification, liberating themselves from the excess that clouds their true priorities. The lesson here is about the art of detachment. It's understanding that the freedom to let go is a gateway to a lighter, more fulfilling existence. By asking ourselves what we can let go of, we initiate a process of decluttering, not just of physical possessions, but also of mental and emotional baggage. As Lao Tzu wisely said, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. So ask yourself, what can I let go of? The answer might guide you toward a more intentional and unburdened way of living, where the things you release create space for new opportunities and a deeper sense of contentment. 25. Do I take time for self-reflection? This question calls us to regularly examine our thoughts, actions and values to ensure alignment with our principles. Imagine the individual caught in the relentless pace of daily demands, rarely pausing to introspect on the congruence of their actions with their deeply held beliefs. The question prompts a deliberate pause, urging them to carve out moments for self-reflection amidst the clamor of life. Consider someone navigating a complex decision, a crossroads where values clash with expediency. By reflecting on whether they take time for self-reflection, they unlock a reservoir of clarity ensuring that their choices align with the principles they hold dear. The lesson here is about the necessity of self-awareness. It's understanding that in the ebb and flow of life, moments of self-reflection serve as compass points, keeping us true to our values. By asking ourselves if we take time for self-reflection, we prioritize the ongoing journey of self-discovery. As Socrates wisely proclaimed, an unexamined life is not worth living. So ask yourself, do I take time for self-reflection? The answer might lead you to a path of continual growth and authenticity, where the mirror of introspection becomes a valuable tool for navigating the complexities of the human experience. In conclusion, these questions serve as a valuable guide for living a more intentional and fulfilling life. By reflecting on who we spend time with, what is within our control, and what truly matters, we gain insights into our values and priorities, the emphasis on taking meaningful actions, making the most of each moment, and aligning our choices with the person we aspire to be, reinforces the idea that our decisions shape the meaning we derive from life. Regularly asking these questions can lead us to answers that contribute to our personal growth and help us become the individuals we are capable of being. Thank you for taking the time to explore these thought-provoking questions with us. If you found value in this discussion, we invite you to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Your support encourages us to continue sharing insights that inspire intentional living and personal growth. Thank you for being a part of our community.